What's up and welcome to the episode of Gizmo Slip TV. Today we're going to take a look at Ninja's 26 kill solo squads game. We're going to be analyzing this replay in detail. The goal here is to figure out how I can improve better as a player and help you guys as well get better, learn from his techniques, learn what he does to really get our game amped to a whole nother level hopefully. Uh, without further ado, let's hop right into it. Notice where he's landing here right off the bat. We are looking at the hilltop above Paradise Palms. I mean, I don't want to read too much into this, but basically He's dealing with solo squads. There's a lot of people at Paradise. He doesn't want to die early. So this is one way for him to secure at least a gun before he gets in there. He also gets some nice minis out of it. So that's really good. Now he's jumping in here to Paradise using a rift to get down as quick as possible. And at the same time, try to scout out, use that high angle perspective to see where other players might be. He gets himself a shoddy right off the bat. Gets very lucky here. Gets an AR shoddy and sniper combo. Uh, now, if I was him, I would pop that Slurp Juice. I think it's worth the one second. But he hears footsteps. He doesn't want to risk, I guess, doing that. Because even just a one or two second delay means could, could mean death. He decides to flank. He hears him. He knows he's there. Anticipates the player's movement. That is a really smart move. Able to catch his opponent by surprise. Um, so he's, he, he saw someone go down below the roof line there. He's going to pursue. See what he can get done here. Now, look what he did. He built early. He was the first one to build. That, I think, is really important. It allows him to get a whole level above his opponent. It also allows him to get this flat piece down right in front of his opponent. And this is really crucial because watch what he does next. First of all, he waits for the opponent to see the flat piece, right? His opponent turns to the left. Looks like he's going to go around. And that's when Ninja... Edits the piece back and away, allowing him to shoot through and destroy his opponent. And of course, he uses the pump AR combo right now. That's what he's got. Ideally, he usually uses a pump SMG or a pump Tommy or maybe even both. So he manages to get some good loot here. He pops a mini and all of a sudden, someone's on top of him again. Notice he builds the double wall. He instantly is just building, all right? He needs to establish a layer of defense between him and the opponent. He does that. He's looking through the wall right here. He can see the opponent, and he's predicting movement. Now, his opponent has the high ground. Let's see what Ninja does to win this. First of all, he's constantly tracking. He's not trying to build up to his opponent's level. He is tracking his opponent. He does not want to lose sight of them. He does not want to be taken by surprise. If his opponent decides to pop out and take a shot at him, Ninja wants to be able to return fire. All right. His opponent jumps down. What is he going to do? His opponent builds. There's an element in Fortnite that is you have building skills, you have positioning, and then you also have just straight reaction speed, all right? His opponent made the mistake of not having the right weapon out. Well, Ninja had the pump shotty out the whole time. He already had the right weapon out. And because of that, Ninja's quick reaction time lands him a 104 damage annihilating this guy in one shot. If you're at a disadvantage on the low ground, you never want to lose sight of your opponent. You want to track their movements, track their location. And if you do decide to build to try to get advantage over them, like if they're just camping up there, then you want to build a back cover so that even if they do decide to shoot at you, you have that at least a thin layer of protection. And the shot warnings will also allow you to turn around and maybe build up additional defense. All right, he lands the kill. And of course, since this is solo squads, there's multiple people coming at him in a chain. So he has to deal with the person and then immediately deal with someone else now right here ninja sees a new opponent he immediately takes stock tries to land an ar shot immediately builds again right he's the first one to build he's taking initiative so constantly taking initiative he lands himself a nice 37 with the heavy shotty i mean at that distance that's okay now he probably should have taken another shot with his shotgun here but instead he opts to take out the AR first and then follow up with a shoddy shot to finish off his opponent. Now he's looking for more squad members. Where are they at? He knows there's still more because he was only knocked down. So Ninja's managed to take out two squads partially at this point. He's got an AR, a heavy shoddy, a sniper, and a dueling pistol. He's trying to get some mats. He's not neglecting his mats. You need mats, especially if you're going to face multiple squads. Now he sees an opponent. His opponent has the high ground. What does he do? He immediately starts building. And when his opponent looks like he has a potential shot, Ninja built a wall right in front of his face so he could not take damage. And now he's being patient. And again, he's tracking his opponent. He's not letting go sight of his potential opponent here. He's watching him, looking for him. And now he's deciding to knock down his opponent from the high ground, which is forcing his opponent to jump down. 
when you're using dueling pistols, you want to make sure you hold down the trigger so that you can aim and track more precisely, all right? I didn't realize that you could actually hold down the trigger on those dual pistols, but you totally can. And the dual pistols are fantastic, really high DPS weapons. So he takes the rift and he's moving towards the circle, just trying to find additional combat, trying to find new squads. Now here he sees a big battle between two squads going down. Now notice that he's finding the opponent that is moving in a straight line going up at an angle. This is the shot that he takes. He misses. I think he leads a little bit too much on that shot. And he's constantly looking for a target that is moving in a straight line. He finds one, takes them out. And of course now he's, he's following up with the AR shots and additional sniper shots as he pursues. And he is also building ramps to cover himself as he approaches the target. All right. That is super important. As you approach the target, if they have potential line of sight shots on you, always put cover down. He's doing it again, just in case. Now watch what he does right here to pursue. He builds a ramp, he builds a flat, he builds a wall, and now he's building a ramp. Now the nice thing about this wall is it protects him from fire from the right side, which is really good. And he's just gonna try to get up here. Now notice his jump is extended by him building a flat down and then he immediately starts building into a ramp again to get the high ground and he's anticipating the player's movement and he finds them again he outplays them with the positioning by building first and pursuing that high ground as soon as possible all right and of course his opponent's like holy crap i don't even know where i'm being shot from because ninja was too quick on the vertical build and just hunts down that huntress now immediately after taking out this huntress he hears another player coming at him he starts laying in shots gets a ton of damage in and now he's pursuing for the final kill he wants to take him out he builds the ramp notice it's a small thing but notice how quickly he built that ramp underneath himself so that he wouldn't have to hit the ground and then jump back up and get on that ramp so that just saves him the time and gives him an opportunity to build a flat he prevents his opponents from getting out of his trap and now he just decides to just shoot straight through it takes one out with the heavy shoddy doing some peak pop in here he hears his opponent running around he gets to the low ground on this hill sees through and takes him out and that's just the kind of thing that an experienced player like ninja is doing all the time looking for angles to take out his opponents he manages to take out a double squad battle here it's just really impressive his positioning his timing his his getting on top of his opponents taking them by surprise consistently it's just it's 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 incredible he's got an incredible game sense he's constantly pushing people in ways they don't expect in order to do that he's a anticipating his opponent's movements really really well and b he's utilizing the existing environment extremely well now he manages to land an excellent sniper shot the guy even built a ramp but it was not quite perfect and then just threaded the needle nailed him all right, now notice right here he spots a squad, and he does not immediately open fire. He is lower on the ground than they are, but he notices that they're going to the circle along with him, and he waits for them to reach the low ground before he opens fire. Also, he waits for the guy to run in a straight line without jumping before shooting his sniper shot. Now he lands the sniper shot, lands the follow-up Tommy gun, and he takes one out before the fight even begins. Now Ninja is being very aware and he doesn't want his opponent to peek and destroy his buildings, especially since he might take a little bit of damage. So the moment this guy peeks, Ninja's already popping out to take him out. He does not want to give this guy a free shot on his building. So you always want to be right next to the edge of your ramp so that you can quickly peek out and take out your opponent if they decide to try to shoot you out. Now, he does a lot of damage, and his opponent builds up really quick. Now, the thing is, Ninja's anticipating that his opponent is probably going to be using minis, so he's immediately pushing, and he's going to do a jump here, build a flat, build a wall, build a ramp. The nice thing about building a triple layer of protection is it prevents the opponent from quickly knocking out one layer and bringing you down to their level. Now, his opponent decides to box himself into this box and watch what he does. He knocks it out quickly quickly builds his own wall then he edits the wall and takes out his opponent with a nice heavy shot with a tommy gun follow-up burst it is really really impressive insanely quick did you see how fast that was that was so quick watch this shot he destroys it and then look at that before the breaking animation is done he's already put his own wall in place it is insanely quick 
Like, I don't even know how that's po- I need to, like, practice that. That is so freaking quick. Okay, so he's spotted a squad. He's exchanged a couple of shots. He's trying to maintain the high ground. So now notice that he is building a double ramp rush with a flat. And he's building a flat, a ramp, and a vertical to prevent him from being shot out with that triple layer of protection. And he sees that guy underneath that ramp. He decides not to go for him. And he knows there's another guy here. And he is... Ooh, he wants to get the shot. He lands it. That guy was very, very low HP. Notice Ninja's loadout here. Instead of carrying explosives, he's actually taking a Tommy gun and an SMG. Now, there's two main benefits to carrying both. First of all, you can continue your spam taking out opponent's walls and dealing damage through walls more consistently so you can burn through their mats better if you have lots of ammo for both, which he does. He has 500 SMG ammo and a 1,000 Tommy gun ammo, so he does not have to worry about burning through all his ammo at all. He can just shoot constantly all day. Now, the other thing here is that you can shoot almost twice as long by carrying both weapons, and you can just spam so much more carrying both, which I think, personally, I would rather have an explosive like C4 rather than an SMG, but that's just me. All right, watch this next fight in slow-mo. He lands the quick musket shot. He whiffs his heavy shotgun blast. He's instantly switching to the Tommy. That fight would have been over if he had landed that heavy shotty shot. He's switching back to the heavy shotty. 88 damage and just takes that guy out. All right, let's break this next fight down in slow motion. He's doing a double ramp rush. He hears a person off to his left, builds a double vertical with a bounce pad. This is a cheeky play. I like it. Only 35 damage with the heavy shoddy. He switches to the Tommy gun, tries to get the damage in, cannot. Uses the bounce pad again, switches back to the heavy shoddy, utilizes that long-range shotgun action, builds a wall blocking him in. His opponent tries to block him out with the vertical wall. Of course, the Tommy Gun's really good at getting through those walls, so it's a really smart play. And he manages to take him out. Since he knocked his opponent down, he knows that there's still someone else alive. And he's constantly trying to listen for footsteps, so he manages to land that shoddy shot and follow it up with a Tommy Gun burst and then take out the final player in that squad. Now he's approaching the final fight. There's three squads going to town right here in Wailing Woods. Let's see what he does. All right, let's break down this fight in slow motion all right so he's gonna do a bounce pad play to try to get into this fight as fast as possible again utilizing that heavy shotgun he was contemplating using that musket for a no scope but he switched back to that heavy shotgun in the last second now notice he builds this ramp he wants to cover himself from the left side he knows there's multiple opponents that could be taking him out so he builds that ramp he comes to the right side he has a flat there as well in front of him and he goes ahead and lays into this guy with the smg he does a ton of damage, but he's unable to knock the guy down. Now he's being rushed on the left. He's anticipating the movement. And because of that quick anticipation, he's able to knock the guy out before the guy could even get his gun out. He gets another quick knock utilizing that blue SMG. He builds the ramp above him on accident there. So he's still, again, not perfect. But he's utilizing the Tommy gun now, the weapon with the full clip. He gets one knock. He's getting damage from behind. He instantly recognizes the source of the damage. Does a quick build around and blocks the damage. And then he immediately addresses the target. If someone's targeting you, you need to address that potential damage source before you continue dealing it to another target. Does that make sense? So it's a really good shot. He lands a big heavy shoddy damage shot here. Uh, knocks the drift down. And now he's pursuing additional targets. He's trying to finish off the target that he had before. Takes out this ramp. Switches. Whoa! That guy lands a huge rocket shot on him. And he's worried. So he's doing a panic move here. He's building a bounce pad. He's trying to find the guy with the rocket launcher. He wants to take that guy out. Knocks one guy out. I'm not sure if that guy was the rocket launcher. Or if the other guy is the guy with the rocket launcher. I think they may have both had rocket launchers, honestly. Now, notice he builds a double ramp of protection. He's got the wall and a ramp, right? Uh, that allows him to actually finish off his mini for a total of 59 HP. Now, notice he's looking through the ramp. They're trying to see an opponent, and he's jumping, trying to see through it. Uh, and he's doing a double fire place here. He's trying to get as much HP as possible. Manages to finish off another opponent so that guy cannot be revived. Now, there are a total of six people, including the people that are knocked. He's trying to find the last two or three. And he sees this guy. He wants to shoot the guy's ankle. He barely misses. That would have been huge. And this opponent that he's facing now is really good as well. Throwing down the fireplace, trying to heal out as much as he can. And his opponent knocks out the buildings from under him, but does not do enough damage. Now they're both pulling out shotties, but Ninja is just a millisecond quicker. All right, this 
Fate player could have killed him if he was literally like a tenth of a second quicker. But Ninja lands the shot and successfully takes him out. Now notice how Ninja is trying to look through this wall and find his opponent, but his opponent is also utilizing the same tactic and sees Ninja behind the wall, and Ninja almost gets significantly damaged here. His opponent is very, very smart. His opponent is a very experienced player, one of the few players in this game who's also experienced. His opponent anticipates his move and gets Ninja down to 29 HP. Ninja is almost done here. This is this is a really good opponent for Ninja. I'm really glad he at least got to fight a handful of people that were really talented. Now let's take a look here. Ninja falls down and he moves really trickily to prevent his opponent from knowing his location, allowing him to pop a couple of minis. Now we're going to go ahead and slow this down. He's tracking his opponent through the wall. Did you see that? He's tracking, knows where his opponent's going. So he already knows what wall to edit. And he's like, oh crap, the opponent is already there, ready to shoot me. Let me build some walls to give myself some cover. And now now Ninja is ready to land a shot. And this opponent is also ready. He's got the high ground. He's got the advantage, all right? And he nails Ninja down to 6 HP. Now, if Ninja had not popped those minis, Ninja would have just died. Ninja apparently does not take the shot. Does, does Ninja really not take the shot? That is, a, that is a pretty big mistake, actually, I think. Let's see what happens here. So he edits the building. He builds the walls. He's got four shots in his, his... He's reloading. He does not take the shot. Ninja fails to take the shot. It's a pretty big mistake from Ninja that time, actually. All right, so now he builds a ramp. He wants to get to the high ground. He, he realizes that this flat piece above him is not editable, so he has to knock it down. As his opponent tries to get around and flank him, Ninja has to quickly build a wall to prevent damage, and then he's building up. He's trying to get the high ground. He's trying to track his opponent. He's looking for him. He's looking for him. His opponent sees him and lands a shoddy shot, but it only does seven damage. Now Ninja has the high ground. He has the advantage for the first time, and he lands the 53 damage to finish off his very good opponent. Well done by Ninja, and that other player played exceptionally well as well. And now Ninja is looking for the last two players. He does not know where they are, but he's trying to get the healing. And you can actually see a little bit of movement in the box to the right, right there. Someone is in the box right to his right right here, but Ninja misses that movement, uh, does not see it. And uh, that's another mistake by Ninja. All right, let's go ahead and see what he does here. Now, Ninja is actually potentially in danger here he does not know where his opponents are so he's just trying to get some distance and he actually sees i i believe he sees he did he see there's movement down there right there there it is now he notices his opponent's movement he manages to get a lot of damage in and he's just trying to track down his opponent gets the successful knock and there is one player left he sees the player look at this rocket the rocket is right there it is literally about to hit him. It was halfway through the wall, but Ninja gets the wall down in time. Extremely fast reaction speed. Now watch this last play. He knows where his opponent is. His opponent has the high ground, and his opponent is using a rocket launcher. That means his opponent is not going to be able to shoot him out of the air, and Ninja places the bounce pad, bounces up, lands a heavy shotty, and switches to the Tommy gun for an epic bounce pad finish. That was a great game by Ninja and super, super interesting. I learned a lot. That was some really great gameplay. His game sense, his tracking, the opponents constantly, his creative plays with the bounce pad, the constantly healing up, not letting himself get whittled down. If he did not do those fireplaces at all times, if he did not pop as many minis as he did in middle of combat, he would have died. There are so many things we can learn from him in this game. I hope you guys enjoyed this analysis. And if you want to see more of these videos, Videos, let me know in the comments down below and give this channel a subscribe, a thumbs up, and of course, don't forget to tune in to more live streams. I am live streaming almost every day of Fortnite, at least for now, so if you guys are interested, stop on by the live stream and say hello. That's it for this episode of Gizmos Live TV. We'll see you next time. Brandon, out.